Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this part of learning game maker language from scratch, we are going to be looking at one of the most basic programming principles, which is the variable. So let's go ahead and jump right in and create an object, whether you're in Game Maker 1 or 2. Go ahead and name it whatever you'd like. I'm just going to do mine OBJ object, keep it real simple. And I'm going to add an event, create. And then we're going to be inside here in the code. If you created a drag and drop program by accident in Game Maker Studio 2, you can right click over here and you can convert it to GML, which is a really cool feature. And you can go vice versa depending on which one you're in. All right. Now, a variable is easy to explain but difficult to understand without a representation. So I am going to put on here, I'm going to type in some code. All right. We're going to call this my first name equals Aaron semicolon. And I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to explain what each part of this is. And then you'll be able to understand it. And then we're going to actually put this into our game and have it do something at the end. All right. So here we have the variable itself. It is a way of storing data inside of your game. The name of the variable is completely arbitrary. Okay. I could have named this fluffy kitties and put my name in it and it wouldn't matter the name that you assign your variable is up to you as the programmer and it is about you reading it so if you named it fluffy kitties and that makes total sense to you in whichever weird world you live in then go for it but if you are storing a name you might want to put it in a way that makes sense like my first name my last name player's name, whatever it might be. You want to have it make sense because you as the person reading it need to understand what it is and then how to change it later on down the road. The computer doesn't care at all. It's ones and zeros to the computer. So you can name it what you want. I would recommend naming it something that makes perfect sense to you. All right. That's the first part. This is the variable itself. This equal sign is called the assignment operator. And I'm saying that not in the hopes that you'll memorize it, but that you will not be scared of formal jargon and you'll understand it when you read it later on. So the equal sign is an assignment operator and it takes this piece of data right here and it puts it into the variable. Now the piece of data is my name in quotes. Okay, the quotes are important because it tells this variable that everything inside of those quotes you need to save. Okay, now if we were doing a number, we wouldn't use quotes, we would just put the number right there. The quotes tell the variable it's going to be a, of string data type, and we'll get to data types down the road. But basically, if you use quotes, you can use any alphanumeric uh, symbols that you want called ASCII values, which are these right here. Uh, they basically any sort of symbol you can imagine that it can hold. Okay, this is on Wikipedia, so if you want to come and look at it, you can and see the hexadecimal value, uh, binary value, everything like that is on here, which is pretty cool. But basically, if it's in quotes, it's going to be interpreted as like letters, as a string, as a sentence. Okay, if you want a number, don't use quotes. And the last thing here is the semicolon. Now, the semicolon is like the period when we are writing out sentences on paper or typing them up. Okay, to a computer, the semicolon says this is the end of this specific sentence. So we're saying, take the variable my first name and create it, and then put the data, Aaron, inside, and that's all. Inside of Game Maker Studio, they're very lenient, so you do not need the semicolon. Outside of GMS, though, pretty much every programming language is going to require you to have some kind of end uh, symbol. A lot of times it is the semicolon, like in Java, C++, but not all the time. I'd recommend you get used to using the semicolon because it is very, uh, well, it just makes a lot of logical sense once you begin programming a lot. You want to have the semicolon to know where it ends, all right? Now, let's do something with this. Follow along with me and type out show message. This will work in GMS 1 or 2. Put in hello world my name is colon space put a plus symbol and put in my first name save that 
And let's go into our room. Let's drag the object inside, press F5, and let's run it. Now it's going to compile, and then it's going to do something with the code we wrote. And it shows this message. Hello world, my name is Aaron. And hopefully you put your name in there, not mine, because that'd be kind of weird. Unless we share a name, because if we do, that's awesome. Uh, this is the... This is makes you an official programmer, okay? This is like a rite of passage. Uh, most tutorials will have you do some kind of hello world statement, and I figured that I should continue the tradition. So with this, you can call yourself a programmer. Now, I would not recommend going and applying for jobs based off of this knowledge. There's a lot more you need to know, but this is a real start, okay? This is awesome. So you have created an object, you put it in a room, and you have started programming. And hopefully this makes sense. The variable is extremely important. It's a very useful piece of data. And you may look at this and you may, and you may say, okay, what's the difference between this and just going like this, putting Aaron in there specifically? Well, right here, there is no actual difference. It's going to display the same thing. But if you wanted to, say, have the player input their first name, well, this is called hard coding, where you actually put in specifically what you want it to show. And hard coding things is usually a bad idea. What you want to do is put in my first name instead, so that if the player inputs their name, now this variable is showing, and you can change what is inside of the variable anytime you want. So hopefully that makes sense. We will use these more as we go along. This is just getting your toes wet and starting you out as a programmer. So. That's all I've got for you. Thank you for joining me. As always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later. If you would like to help me continue making tutorials and game development videos, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. And here are the people that have supported me, and I just want to give a big shout out to them because it is truly awesome that these people are willing to donate their money to me because I think that's just wicked cool. I didn't think I'd be getting any money for doing this kind of stuff because I just love to do it. But if you want to support me, please hit me up on Patreon and I will add your name to this list and you will be known as a supporter of me, which I guess counts for something. That's all.